For the past five plus years on Flip with Rick, we have taught hundreds of thousands of wholesalers how to get rich with the power of wholesaling real estate. And we've talked to so many incredible people that heard their stories and how they changed their lives with freewholesaling.com and this YouTube channel. The stories that always excite me and you the most is hearing everyone's story on their first wholesaling real estate deal. So today we've compiled the top first deal stories from wholesalers across the country on how they got their first wholesaling real estate deal, their marketing on how they got these deals and how much money they made. I hope these stories inspire you to go out there and get your first wholesaling deal. Thank you guys so much. I just finally closed that deal I've been working on for five, six months. The probate. <laughs> yeah, dude. The probate foreclosure, uh, that took forever. Um, oh, but I just can't thank you guys enough because my whole mindset and perspective has changed for what I thought was possible for myself. And for those of you that are watching the live and who will, will watch the recording later, just do what Rick and Zach tell you to do. You, eventually you will win. You'll have some setbacks here and there and that's what they're here for to answer your questions, but it's inevitable. You will win. You just have to put in the work. But anyway, the proof is in the pudding. So I already cashed it in Woo! right there. $50,000. Wow. Gosh, that's a lot of money. Uh, Woo! Uh, that, dude, that was my very first deal and there was so many twists and turns and it was it was difficult to navigate but i honestly i learned so much from it and i have the confidence now all right oh. and i think that the most the most that i got out of it was just helping the sellers because they were just in such a bad situation and it just they were makes lost me feel, right yeah it and it just makes me feel good that i was able to solve it for them you know what i mean because they were gonna lose the house and get nothing yeah. for it you know what i mean so mr fernando who He's getting kicked out of the challenge because he got his first deal. <laughs> right there. Look at that. Oh, snap. Woo! That's awesome, man. Get him out of, get him out of the challenge. Kick him out. <laughs> I feel like I got lucky on this one because it was within like the first 200 driving for dollars leads. Work, and I worked two and a half hours away one direction. So ended up stumbling into this really goofy kid. And I'm like, man, this guy's talking about real estate. He's got this really silly intro, and I, I, who is this guy? But the intro, I'm like, I, I, I don't understand this. I gotta watch this. So I watched it on my way home. And I'm like, man, this guy, he seems to know what he's talking about. Like, I, I've always figured real estate people is just kind of like conniving bad. Like, it just, the whole industry, think about where I'm from. I'm from the middle of nowhere. I mean, people that buy real estate down there are really just trying to bend people over to be honest, like it's, it's never been a glaring opportunity. It's never been something that we're like, oh yeah, we love real estate investors around here. Like it's always been a very, just kind of a nasty industry in my opinion, really bad opinion turns out, but uh, it was a really nasty industry. Um, watch Rick and Zach got home, kicked that thing in the couch back. And when I did that thing caught in my back and my wife had to help me crawl to my bed where I laid for three days. Um, got up after the third day, went to the chiropractor, and it turns out I've got stage two degeneration in my lower spine. My spine is literally rubbing together every day um, that I'm doing this job. Go going to the job and then going home and going to the gym, like <laughs> I'm slowly starting to kill myself or put myself in a position where my kids are gonna have to take care of me well before they even really even need to think about that. And so when that happened, I was just like, man, something's gonna have to change. And I don't care what it is. And the whole three days that I laid in bed, I'm watching Rick and Zach's videos the whole time. If I'm awake, their videos are on. If I'm, if I'm asleep, their videos are still playing and I fell asleep, but they, they were on for three days straight. And I took their course, and this was all back in like late December, early January time frame. Um, and I, I just immediately took action. I knew we had a performance review at my job. We did a Zoom call for my performance review. And my manager goes, hey man, we decided to do something really great for you this year. And my wife was on speaker, she heard it on the speaker. And he goes, we, uh, we decided to give you a 3% increase. And I'm like, awesome, that's, that's really great. He's like, yeah, so we took your salary to uh, $48,520, isn't that sweet? And I'm like, yeah, dude, like super, super cool, like awesome. I, I, I made like $2,000 more a year now, that's, I'm killing it. <laughs> like, 
Um, but the wife knew right then and there that, that I was done because the response that I gave that guy, he, he knew very well that I was not happy or pleased or even interested in that. Um, and she knew right then and there that I was done with the job. So I kind of closed my first deal, uh, which ended up being a $10,000 assignment. Closed my second deal, which happened to be a $72,500 assignment. <laughs> I called my title company at 10 o'clock that morning. It was supposed to close. And I'm like, when's this check hit? And they're like, it'll be there at noon. Looked at my bank account at noon. It wasn't there. Refreshed it at 12.05. It was there. I called my boss. I'm like, dude, where do you want me to drop this shit off at? Because I'm done. <laughs> so excited when I got that deal, man. I was trying to actually JV with you. But for some reason, that didn't go through. And, you know, I was forced to find a buyer. And I did it. But look at this thing. Yeah. <laughs> what is this? 10 grand on a FISBO? Yep. Dude, let's go. Man, I just I just followed your videos and followed all your rules that you gave me and I put action to work and that's what I got. Bro, I told dude, it works, right? Wholesaling yep, works. Fisbos work. You're the reason why I do my live cold calling on Fisbos. Because I know at least one person is going to listen to me and say, you know, I should probably do that. And look, you did it. Tell me about the deal, man. Uh, well, you know, right after watching that video, man, I just said, man, let me see if I could try this. And I went and I went on Zillow. I started to search. And then I stumbled up on this house by actually by accident. I was just getting ready to get off the computer and go do something else because I have two kids. I was getting ready to pick up from school. And I was just like, mm, let me just write this down. And I try to look up the ARV. You know, I was starting to go crazy, looking up numbers. And I'm like, man, just follow what Zach said. So I discounted whatever the accent price was, which was, it was 102000 I think there was accent for it. And I did the math on it. And I said, you know what? I got to be somewhere around fifty, sixty thousand. 60000 so anyway, I called up the seller, you know, starting to get some report on the house. Then in the middle of getting a report, then they say, hey, you know what? I can't really negotiate with you too much on this because I have an agent, agent involved. And I'm like, why the hell wouldn't they tell me that from the beginning? So we're in the middle of agreeing to some price right now. And then she hit me with that. And then a little after that, the agent called me. So I gave my offer and he was like, yeah, I can't, I can't accept that. It's too low. So I'm like, so I'm like, what do you mean? I mean, you know, so anyway, we went back and forth, went back and forth and he hanged up the phone on me a few times. He called me a scammer. <laughs> you know, it, it was so funny, but this was on market for, I think, 172 days. So anyhow, end up calling me back, I guess, you know. Everything was starting to make sense. I was trying to tell him. I was like, you know, it's been on market for this long. Why haven't you sell it yet? You know, is there something that I don't know about with the property? You know, I gave a good offer. You didn't consider it. And you hanged up the phone on me. And you also called me a scammer. Anyway, we came to the point that, you know, we made an agreement. He said, you know what? If you can give me this and you could close quick, I accept the offer. Anyway, I sent over the agreement. He signed it and we put I put down, I think it was a hundred dollars um EMD deposit. And boom, Zach, I didn't waste no time, man. Right. Hey. I sent it over to the title company. And then this the second thing I did after sending it over to the title company was send it to you. And I was just like, oh my God, I gotta get this done. I gotta get this closed. Zach, I went on prop stream. It said no cash sales in the area. I'm like, oh my God. Oh. Uh -oh. <laughs> so I went ahead and I watched a few more of your videos and he said, How to find cash buyers? And I'm like, all right, I got this. So I went searching the area, just looking for any properties that I could find that has been maybe bought at a discounted price and then mm -hmm. put on the market a few months after. And I found a few within the area and I started a call up. And I think on the third call, I found a property and I found the agent that listed that property. And I called up the agent. And I said, hey, I'm calling in reference to this property here that you listed, you know, for the owner. Do you know the owner? Do you know if the owner is looking for any more properties? Maybe they're looking to fix and flip. And he was like, yeah, sure. Let me give you the number. And he gave me the number and then boom, I send over the pictures, everything. She went to look at it the next day and boom, the agreement was signed. She liked it and we was getting ready to close. I mean, it, dude, 10 grand, Zillow <laughs> Fisbo. How, how did you learn it? Was it all freewholesaling.com? Like, what was it? Everything from freewholesaling.com. I mean, I was researching like a month prior to me stumbling up on your YouTube channel. And it, it was just like perfect timing, man. Everything I needed answer to was on your 
YouTube channel. I'm telling you, man. I, at least you took what I said and went after it, man. So uh, you're inspirational, man. I, that's why I want to hop I, on and talk to you, man. I, 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 I appreciate I love it. Dude. I've been trying to get on with you, I think, over a month now. And for <laughs> some reason, I think yesterday I tried to get on with you. And for some reason, I, it wouldn't let me on. Or it almost like I cut off. There's a lot of people I try to get on. But uh, I try to get as many people as I can. But dude, that's awesome, man. What? How did it feel to get that deal, dude? Oh, uh, it, it, it feel unreal, man. Like my wife was like, nah, so you're telling me you're just going to get paid just for doing that. And I'm like, the only one way to find out is when they send the paycheck, <laughs> you know, right. when it came in, um, they, I think they did like a, um, a next day for the check. So when it came in, I was just like, bomb right at the door. The UPS guy was like, here. And I opened it real quick. Then I looked and I was like, damn, this shit is real. Oh! Oh, snap. <laughs> Beautiful, man. That's 6000 right there. That's my first one, so I framed it. <laughs> okay. What is that? That's, That's 500 bucks per one-on-one call he did with us? I don't know. Well, whatever one it was, <laughs> it ended up doing well, man. Right? And so... Yeah. I actually I got another one, too, for 5000 So... They just come easier after the first one, right? Oh, yeah. I've, I've been on here a couple times. You know, I've been I've been watching you guys for probably like a year and a half but I, I didn't really start taking action until January. Yeah. And once I really like buckled down and started doing it, I, I got two deals. I closed them in, uh, when was that? May. It, it just, it sucks because I'm looking back now and I see that that cash buyer sold it for 50,000, but it doesn't matter. Cause yeah. I didn't, I didn't put up any money. He put up his own money. He bought it. So it is what it is. He could have lost 50 on it. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So I'm cold calling now and I'm um, looking for the next one. Uh, essentially, I decided that uh, driving for dollars with the combination of sending mailers via the deal machine app was going to be the best avenue for me to keep that kind of time and money thing balanced. You know, as you guys have said, you can either invest a ton of time or you can invest a ton of money or there's that middle ground. So doing the deal machine mailers was really uh, my middle ground so to speak. Um, so I think I got like, I want to say I had like 250 driving for dollars leads uh, when I finally got like my first property under contract. Um, and the the story on that one, uh, it was actually a fix and flipper, but he was also renovating a duplex and he needed a cash influx from the single family residence in order to finish the rehab on his duplex. Hmm. Um, so that's why that's where his motivation to sell was, you know, he, he needed, I guess you could say he was over leveraged and he just needed that cash influx to finish the rehab on his duplex. Um, so that's, that's where I got that first deal from, from a mailer. That was the guy's motivation. Um, and then long story short, I ended up selling the house to the neighbor. Um, she was, she was actually in conversations with the guy. Mm -hmm to put the property under contract and do the deal. She had already like got an appraisal. She was going to do an appraisal on her primary residence to do a cash out refi on the property next door. Um, but she never went under contract with them. And, you know, he, he said, he told me, he was like, you know, I talked to her like a couple of weeks ago and she, she never said anything else. So I thought the deal was dead. Um, but she saw me outside walking a buyer, uh, around like in the backyard and asked what I was doing. And, uh, you know, I told her what I was doing. Right. Uh, then one, one thing led to the next and, you know, ended up making the most sense for me to just do the deal with her. Oh, wow. So so, uh, one off situation for sure. Wow. Okay. So what was that property under contract for then? Um, so I had it under contract for 52, five, 52, five. And I was originally trying to let it go for like 65. Um, but I, I definitely had it locked up too high and I knew that going into it, but it was my first deal and I really just wanted to get it done. You know, like I needed that proof of concept to keep moving. Um, so I ended up letting it go to the neighbor for uh, 55. So I made 2,500 bucks on my first deal. Can't be mad at that. And we started Facebook ads and within a week I locked up this deal with this gentleman who had no knowledge of how to use a computer. He was 86 mm. years old. And, uh, I, you know, I got him on the phone and I know I got him at a really no number. So I was like, you know, uh, I need to sign an agreement with you. And I live in Pennsylvania. This deal yeah. was in Georgia. 
<laughs> so he's like, listen, you're going to have to show up at my door with a piece of paper. And so I got in my car, drove 10 hours and got the contract signed the very next Jeez. day. So it's all about taking action. Wow. And tell me about that deal. So was that the $90,000 plus deal? Yes. So let, let's get a little more detail on this. So, so <clears throat> the Facebook ad came through and, you know, the little questionnaire that it gives you, how much are you looking to get? So I hop on Zillow and I'm 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 doing the ARV and I'm looking at the ARV. It's like six hundred fifty thousand. It was a a a mountain in the ca a cabin in the mountains. Sorry, in this real rural area. And I asked him how much he wanted and he was like, I'm looking to get three hundred and eighty thousand dollars for it. So automatically I'm like, you know, this this has to be a great deal. Yeah. And uh, one thing led to another. I got in my car, drove. Uh, got the deal signed, and uh, that was my first contract signed. Ads on Craigslist. So, you know, I post ads on Craigslist every day, and uh, this was actually an inbound lead. So this lead actually came to me. Uh, he was an older gentleman. Um, you know, his, his health was, was kind of poor. He couldn't keep up on the properties. He had tenants that weren't paying rent since you know the the worldwide issue that kind of happened and uh <laughs> i don't want to mention it but uh yeah. yeah yeah and so uh with that you know he had a lot of non-paying tenants and new york state isn't a very friendly landlord state uh there's a lot of stipulations in new york it's an attorney closing state which makes it kind of a pain as well um, but yeah, I mean, that's kind of how these, these deals came to me. It was, off, was off a of Chrysler ad and this guy had three properties that were all next to each other on the same street, 11 units total. And he just, he wanted to be done with them. So that's kind of how I came across my first deals was off of Chrysler ad actually. Wow. So you post it every day. Like what's the ad copy? Like, what are you posting? Where are you posting? So I post in Craigslist ad uh, in terms of uh, there's a section for housing wanted. So mm -hmm. I post in the, in the housing wanted section. Um, I don't know if a lot of other folks have this, this issue in their markets, but uh, a lot of times your ads will get flagged by other wholesalers. Wow. <laughs> so they yeah, they'll flag your ad. They'll take it down. So you just got to be persistent. You know, it's like, you know, it, it takes me two seconds to post the ad. I literally copy and paste. But, um, but yeah, so I do that faithfully every day, even to this day. Um, I'll post in that section. Your first deal, 24 grand. So let's, let, let's go through that. You went to freelancing.com. You started cold calling. What list were you cold calling? Did you get a deal from that list? Like what, give me the whole steps. Yeah. So for that first one, it was a vacant deal. Um, or vacant list rather. Okay. And um, yeah, I went on batch leads, pulled the vacant lists um, or vacant properties in, in Providence County here in Rhode Island, and then just cold called them. Um, used the batch dialer, called through. Um, I'd call at night and then in the morning, um, just when I had the time to actually do it. And I think it was two, within the first two weeks of, of calling, I uh, scheduled up the appointment, went to the house, met the guy. It was, uh, it was a vacant property. He had bought it before COVID to try to fix and flip it. And then uh, actually kind of ran out of money. So it was Ooh. a stall, uh, you know, uh, halfway done uh, renovation, basically. So I went through, met, took some pictures, uh, built some rapport with them, and then negotiated them to a really good price. And then, uh, you know, ended up selling that deal. Well, how did you? All right. Let's, so you negotiate the price of all these things. Was it in person? Like, what? Give, give me a little bit more story on this one, because so many people starting out, they they need to know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I met him in person. Um, it was like 15 minutes from where I live, so I went to the house, met him in person. I was pretty nervous to do that. I'll be honest. That was uh, it was the first appointment I ever went on for, for obviously real estate. Um, didn't really know what I was talking about, um, <laughs> just from what I, I knew from watching your videos and and some other things online, but. Um, yeah, I went in, met him. I actually didn't do any negotiating there. Um, so I, I kind of both, both the deals I've done, I, I do a little bit differently than probably most people. Um, hmm. I, I go in and I, I try to take pictures. Obviously I, I ask them if I can take pictures. Um, but I go and I, I just, 
build rapport, um, walk through the house, try to pull out the why, you know, why they want to sell, um, more things about the condition, just all the little things that I would need to know to try to make it a deal. Um, and then I just tell them, Hey, listen, I gotta, you know, look at, look at this, talk to my partner and, um, I'll give you a call within a few hours and make you an offer. And then I, I always try to ask, you know, what do you think this is worth? Um, both my deals did not tell me, they basically told me you make me the offer first. So, um, I had to deal with that, but yeah, I called them, uh, went, went through the house, took me like 30 minutes, um, went home, uh, looked at all the pictures, you know, ran the numbers really quick and, you know, decided on a, an a offer I wanted to give, called them, gave them the offer. Um, I really low balled them. I offered them like 150. Um, and he said, you know, it can't come down that low, but he'd meet me at 190, which based on the numbers, I knew that would, that was a deal. Um, and I, I could I have negotiated him down a little more maybe, but uh, I was, I was pretty excited. So I said, all right, well, let me talk to my partner. I'll call you right back. And then I just celebrated five minutes later, called him back. And, uh, you know, that was, that was it. So awesome. What was the kind of, what was that pitch on that offer? Cause I bet you were kind of nervous. I was Did you so use I, kind of your own pitch Did you use a free scene.com one. Like what, what was the one that you used? Yeah. So, um, I actually wrote down, I went on a Google doc and basically wrote down everything I was going to say. And I, I do that now with all my, all the offers I make, um, which I think part of is why I like to do it the way I do, where I actually call them back later. Mm. Um, cause it gives me more time to look at all right, everything we talked about in the appointment, everything I saw and, um, you know, what I'm going to say. Right. So yeah, I actually wrote out a script. I used a lot of what I learned from watching um, your videos and um, implemented some of my, some of my own stuff and uh, yeah, it, it worked. But <clears throat> first deal I, uh, I had, I had money saved up cause I used to sell cars, but I didn't have enough money to go and spend on a bunch of marketing. It was to survive and pay rent and these types of things. So I, you know, I had some money saved up and I was like, okay, I got about six months before I need to go get a job. Let's make it happen. Um, so I was kind of stuck with how am I going to get deals with no marketing budget, really? Maybe I had 150 bucks that I could spend a month to to get things going. So I relied pretty heavily on uh, working with real estate agents at first. Um, I don't I don't like doing that anymore. I, I I don't like working with real estate agents all the time. There's you know, it's a needle in a haystack to find a good agent. But I was able to to build some relationships with some key agents. And fun fact, my very first deal looking back at all the deals we did last year, that was hundred percent my best deal ever. And I didn't know it at the time. And so, yeah, I was super blessed. I had this real estate agent bring me an off market deal. I made an offer on an on market deal that they were representing the seller on and that offer didn't go through. So I asked the agent, do you got anything else? And he brought me this off market deal and I was able to assign it for about a $15,000 wholesale fee. And we closed Man, that deal was that was stressful because it was at the end of the year. The seller needed to sell before the new year. And so it was right the day before Christmas, I believe, is when I got it under contract. And I was like, how am I going to close this deal in five or six days? And so luckily, all the stars kind of aligned. And at that point, that's when I was like, OK, I'm, I think I'm meant to do this. Wow, man. Let, let's talk about the stars aligning there. Like, how did you find the buyer for that in five days? So I found the, I posted the deal on Facebook. I didn't have any, any other options. I, I mean, I started learning. So I moved to Dallas in November. So a month right before that deal. So I didn't have any buyers list. I didn't have any of that stuff. And I didn't really care about that because I figured there's no point in building this buyers list if I don't have a deal to sell them. So I, I kind of was like, if I find a good deal, I know I'll find a buyer. And so I just relied on Facebook. I posted the, the assignment of contract on Facebook and I was just, I was pretty mind blown. I was getting probably 40 to 50 messages that day of people wanting that deal. Again, I didn't know at the time, but that was one of the best deals I've ever done. And I thought I, I thought it was going to make a really small fee. I didn't think it was the best deal. And so, yeah, I got pretty shocked. I found the buyer on Facebook and he was Luckily, this guy I've done multiple deals with since then. He was a really solid buyer and uh, he was able to pull off the five day closing. And, it, and it, like I said, kind of all the stars aligned. We found a perfect title company that, you know, I didn't have an investor friendly title company. I didn't have any of these things. I was just looking for the first deal. And so, wow. you know, found a great title company. And it's still one that we use to this day. And so that's what I mean when I say all the stars aligned. 
no issues with title. Everything just went super smooth. That is the only deal that's gone that smooth. And uh, about six months in, closed my first deal. Wow. Uh, so what market were you in? I'm out of Houston. Nowhere. Uh, my buddy, uh, the guy that I was partnering with, did a lot of marketing back in the day. And it was a very broad net, like radio marketing. Um, he had a lead come in from his website out of nowhere. He hadn't done marketing on his website for years. Mm. But a random lead came in. They said, come out. I want to sell the house today. So I go drive over to Eagle Lake, Texas, like like an hour and a half away, middle of nowhere. I meet these people, chat with them. I, I chat them up for like three hours, right? Just sitting down with them, talking about it. House needed a lot of work. And uh, yeah, I just throw out the classic low ball offer the way that Zach can taught me. And uh, yeah, I contract the property at 70. We go back. We're not sure if it's a deal because it's a very rural area and mm. needs a lot of work. So we send it out to the email list just to see what happens. And we have a guy reply saying, I'll take it. And the deal took 90 days to close because it's a super rural county and the recorder sucks. Like it was so oh. hard to get it closed. Uh, but eventually it got done. I had to find the seller release. It was, it was probably the most painful deal I've done. <laughs> but I made 87.50 from my cut, uh, 50.50. And um, yeah, no, blessed for it. And, and that you can get. But my first like true wholesale deal was at a JV. Um, which I just did, I think in December. And uh, actually it was with a, so we, it was with a wholesaler that we had bought a house from and flipped it. And he reached out to me and was like, Hey, I got this deal. You interested? And I was like, no, it's not really in a town that I buy in, but Hey, you know, I'll help you find the buyer for it. So, um, you know, that's a great way that I found to get into some deals and without, you know, all the marketing and having to go find sellers and stuff is to help people find buyers. And you'd be surprised that like in certain towns and things, you know, or people are just lazy or whatever, like they just can't, you know, they have a hard time finding a buyer that's interested and that's going to close. So, um, you know, he gave me this deal. I was like, Hey, you want to split it 50, 50. If I find a buyer, he's like, yeah, go ahead. You know, I didn't try to like lock him into any kind of like exclusivity contract. I was just like, you know, Hey, if I can provide some value for you, um, you know, is it cool if we split this deal? And he's like, absolutely. Totally. So, uh, I didn't have any buyers in this town, but I just went and went on MLS, went on uh, batch leads and literally just like, you know, started calling every single like prop, like investment or landlord, mm -hmm. <laughs> like circling the house until, you know, I finally uh, found an interested buyer and uh, got that to close. It was a small deal, only $5,000 that we split, but, you know, hey, you know, 2,500 bucks is 2,500 bucks. Yeah, he was like, I can send you over a course. I'm like, all right, man, send the course over. And it was uh, your dad, you know, you on your dad's course. He's like, check it out. I'm like, how much does it cost? He's like, it's free. I'm like, there's no way it's free. He's like, bro, they're probably one of the few people out there that are actually giving away free game and, and it's actually legit. So I'm like, all right, man, I'll check it out. Um, I registered for the course and then you guys, it said register for the free contract. So I download the contract, Um, check the contract out. I read through it. I'm like, okay, cool. So this, I'm like, this is pretty, you know, this is pretty cool. So I've always been in a Facebook group and every day I see deals. Like I see deals. I'm always seeing deal, deals in there. So I'm like, okay, I know I can do this, man. I know I can do it. I come from an insurance background. It's just going to take some work ethic. So I would stay up late night. Um, I have a, at the time I had a newborn. Well, she was still, um, she was on the way. We had about like three, three or four months left. And I had an idea. I'm like, Hey, well, I want to start, you know, another business for her. Um, I want to be able to, you know, leave her something if something were to happen to me or just for something for her to have when she grows up. So I started the um, I started RN real estate group, which is my LLC. And I'm like, you know what? Well, I can have an LLC all I want. I need to have this thing making money. So I would study, you know, I would study the course, study the course just to get. I said, the main thing is if I can understand the terminology and just understand a little bit, I can figure out the rest along the way as I started actually getting out there in the field and actually doing work. Cause I'm more of a uh, experienced learner. Like if I go through the experience and I actually do be hands-on, I can learn more. Um, so, you know, that's what I did. I just, I went through, um, I started going through the course. I started learning terminologies and then um, I, I started, you know, I started, uh, I didn't actually pull a list. The crazy thing about it is I actually started on, cause in insurance, I'm used to using what we call internet leads. So person contact us and they're looking for insurance. So I was like, well, I think there's probably a way to where I could um, find the system or build a system to where I could have leads coming in. So what I did was, I guess, what people call PPC leads. Um, in other words, PPC leads. Um, so I started like I built a system to start having my own PPC leads coming in similar to what I have for my insurance. 
And um, the first the first call I made, the lady I called a lady, and I'm like, hey, I didn't even, I didn't even have a script. I'm just like, hey, Justine, are you looking to sell your property at you know one two three Main Street? She's like, yes. I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is you know Daryl. You know, we, you know, we pay with cash. We can close as little as thirty days. Like, you know, I just kind of just made the script up on my, you know, just off of my head, just made the script up. I'm like, I know if I just sound like I know what I'm talking about, I should be fine. Um, so you know, I went through and I said, can I go out and walk the property and just check it out? She's like, yeah, my mom can meet you out there. I'm like, all right, cool, cool, cool. I like, so well, can she meet me there tomorrow? Yeah, she can meet you there tomorrow. So I go out there tomorrow. Crazy thing was, my first actually wholesale deal was a farm. And it was it was 42 acres plus the Ooh. house. The, yeah, the home was around 5,300 square feet. So um, I was just like, okay, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> so I go out there, check everything out. The home needs a lot of work, but it was still pretty good and it was vacant. So I'm like, okay, I guess the next step is, you know, seeing, you know, what she'll take for a cash offer. She told me her number um, and we went back and forth for probably over a month. And I just, um, I talked with her about a month. And um, we were just going back and forth, and I kept getting discouraged. I'm like, well, maybe I shouldn't do this wholesaling thing. Maybe I don't know what I'm doing. And in my head, I said, you know what? Um, every deal has a, has a buyer. I said, if I just stick to it and I just keep grinding it out every day and I keep negotiating with her, I can get a contract. So what I would do is I would just follow up with her all the time. So now I really, truly believe that even if you can't get the deal at first, I believe if you follow up with them and they hear from you enough, you'll be able to get the deal at some point. Um, and I kept following up with her. And then one day we came to an agreement on the number and she's like, send the contract over now. I just need to be able to get my things out. Take me about 30 days. I said, that's no problem at all. I said, we can give you time to get everything out. So that's not an issue at all. Um, I sent the contract over to her through DocuSign. She signed it. And um, I went on I went on Facebook Marketplace and I, and I listed the, I, mean, I put the home up there on Facebook Marketplace um, and I put assignment of contract, cash buyers and hard money only. But all of this information I learned either from the course of your dad and you put together or either just scrolling through the Facebook group, I would just see what others are doing. And I would just like implement what they're doing. I'm like, if I just implement what they're doing, I'm sure it will work. And um, I think it took me about two weeks or so. And I found an, I found the uh, end buyer. I actually had two buyers meet me at the property. I had a lockbox down there. And one of the buyers came and he's like, I want it right now, man. He's like, I'll give you the deposit right now. The guy gave me cash. He's like, here's a thousand dollars cash, man. This, I got this in my pocket. I can give you more, whatever you need. I want the property. I'm like, I looked at my, I looked at my fiance. I'm like, this isn't real. <laughs> she, she's like, yeah, I'm like, this is not real. And the guy's like, send the contract over right now, man. I'll go ahead and sign the assignment of contract and we're good to go. We, I said, so you can close this Friday. It's like, yeah, man. I'm like, I said, do you have proof of funds? The guy literally pulled up his bank account. He's like, I have it right here, man. This, this is my account. You see, I have proof of funds right here. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm just like, wait, you have three hundred and seventy thousand dollars just to just to to get this done. He's like, yeah. I'm like, wow. I didn't I didn't believe him. Like my my fiance, we're driving back from the you know from it, and she's like, this is crazy. Like you're gonna make that much money and you you just started. I'm like, yeah, but I'm like, you know, thanks to you guys, like I said, putting the course together and just having that group. I feel like just that Facebook group alone. If you're scrolling through there like I am every day. Just looking at different people do deals, it inspires you to want to at least keep going. Uh, the first deal, so I've tried, cold calling works really well, but I was not great at it at first. But I went like a week or two cold calling. And I'm not going to say it horrible, but I didn't land any warm, warm leads. And I came, I had a little bit of capital because I was a, a lifeguard during the summer. And so I lived with my parents. So, you know, I didn't have, to, I didn't have any expenses. So I had some money in the savings. And so I saw a video, I think it was Rick talking about the ROS postcards. That's how mm -hmm. I got my first, that's how I got my first deal. So I copied everything he said on mailing mastery, everything to the last detail. And I think I, except for, he said, spend at least a thousand. I think I spent like 400 bucks on it. Um, and cause I, I mean, I was, I was nervous. I'm sure you can understand that. I was like, Smith, I've never spent 400 bucks on something that I don't know. It's going to give me a return. And, um, Unless it's like shoes or something like that. But besides that, so I spent the money on the direct mail. And uh, a week or two later, um, a seller uh, reached back out to me. The offer on the postcard was 116800 whatever. I ended up negotiating down to 70500 because the ARV of the house was around 180 185 at the time. 
And so it needed probably 30, 35,000 in work. So I was just using, you're probably going to get mad at me here saying it here's the 70% rule, right? That's okay. the, the original, <laughs> this was back in January. All right. Forget about it. It's cheaper real estate though. So mm -hmm. it's different. Right. And uh, I just followed that and uh, sent them. I actually negotiated over text and um, mm -hmm, which is, you're probably going to correct clown me for that but i negotiated over text because i was so scared i was so nervous yeah and i ended up landing it got it under contract at seventy thousand five hundred, and found a buyer at eighty seven thousand five hundred. was that 17 grand a little yeah. more 17 come on i, I love that man i so yes you know it's better to negotiate in person do you still negotiate over text now no no no, no never no it's like that's just I, something I, I, in the beginning mm -hmm. you between you and me and everyone watching this, you probably could have made 25 if you did it in person, but that's okay. Yes, so. I, I truly believe to, cause like you're subconsciously, I feel like you got that deal and now you know it's real. And so it's in the backhead, like, okay, wholesaling is real. What Zach is saying is real. If I actually know how to do this and start doing $30,000 deals, like I could probably do it. Right. So you got it under contract. You found the seller there. Like, let's talk about the first deal because everyone's first deal is crazy. Yeah. Uh, were you nervous talking to a seller? Were you not nervous? Like what, what was that situation like? So the first deal, um, it was pretty nerve wracking and it was actually not as hard as I thought it was going to be once I just put, put the fear aside and actually listen to what you said. So I ended up driving for dollars after work and I came across this house with, that was by my job. I was like, you know what? I'm going to call that. And, you know, I came back home, literally just cracked open the laptop, you know, uh, true people search. And <laughs> he answered the phone. I was like, hey, is this the owner of 123 Main Street? I don't want to say the whole address, but yeah. he was like, yeah. And then I was like, hey, I drove past the house today. Uh, I was wondering if you'd be interested in the offer. And he was like, yeah. And then I went through the whole little rundown, the condition, well, the motivation condition uh, and all that good stuff. And the story behind it was he actually had bought multiple properties that he was working on and he couldn't get to that in time. So he was like, I'll just cash this one out because I probably won't get to this no time soon. And I was like, OK, cool. So I was like, all right, uh, I'm going to call back. I ran some numbers. I barely knew how to run numbers, <laughs> barely knew how to run numbers. And I came back with him and I kid you not. I was like, am I really about to offer this man uh, $10,000? <laughs> and I was like, I hope I don't get hung up on. And uh, he was like, you know what? I'll do 14. I was like. Okay, I can make that work. So locked it up at 14 grand. And, and when I tell you it this was really smooth because he was he was real easy to work with. He met up with me, gave me the keys to the house. And like I didn't know him from a can of paint. Just gave me the keys to the house. He said, go look at it. Da, da, da. So uh I also took another thing when Zach said with the Facebook groups. And I had some buyers show up that weekend and they was all around like 15 K. No, they was all around like 11, 11 or whatever, 14, nothing too crazy. So I was like, I'm going to break even. So I went back to the seller and I said, Hey, uh, you know, I looked at the house. I noticed it was, it was a little bit more damaged than I anticipated. You, do you think we could, uh, have a little wiggle room. He said, yeah, he ended up dropping down to 11K because remember I locked him up at 14. And the reason why I knew that was a deal because one of the last buyer of the day said, I would take it at 14. And I'm like, that's what I got locked up at. <laughs> so when he was like, yeah, I can drop to, I'll do 11. I was like, deal. And <laughs> so uh we sent him over the purchase sales agreement. He signed for 11. I immediately called the buyer and I'm like, okay, let's do it for 14 grand. Hmm. And sent it over to title. I didn't even have a title company yet. <laughs> I hit up a, uh, an investor in the area from one of the Facebook groups. And he's like, yeah, good title company is uh, accurate over there in Oakland Park. I was like, bet. 
sent that over and they ran title search and it was a deal made. It was, it was a deal. Wow, man. Hey. So basically he helped me get my first deal by putting up Craigslist ads and we split the deal 50 50. So he basically did a JV. And that was how I did my first deal. Coincidentally enough, I had never saw that house. Wow. Ever. So my first deal, and this is like 10 years ago, um, I'm an OG in this business now, but 10, <laughs> 10 years ago, man, and I'd never seen that house. And it freaked me out because I was like, uh, this has to be illegal. Like, there's no way that this makes sense. I never saw the house. It's an hour and a half away. Like, are you telling me this is real? And like, from there, I was just sprinting towards deals, man. I was like, I was hooked. So, yeah. Bill ended up being the Zillow for sale by owner. And uh, I seen how you would cold call the Zillow for sale by owners. I was like, well, if he can do it, I, mean, I can try. So, I looked at my market on Zillow. There was only a couple of for sale by owners. And one of them was actually a really motivated seller. And the property was motivated as well. So, I kind of you know, did a soft close on the get go to kind of see what kind of discount I could get off of that Zillow list price. I went out there to the property. Did the walkthrough, spent a ton of time with this gentleman who was called a gentleman, spent a ton of time with him building rapport, and got that sizable discount that I knew I was going to need to move that deal to a buyer. And uh, I signed that deal about a week later to somebody else. That first deal made a $4,000 assignment fee on that. Ooh. It closed, and I actually just moved another deal to that same buyer uh, on Tuesday, actually. We Ooh. closed that Tuesday. So me and that buyer, because it's kind of crazy how it worked out. That was my first wholesale deal, and that was his first investment property deal. We pretty much were virtually wholesaling, so it is possible to anyone watching. Um, how we got our first wholesale deal, we uh, we we pretty much we we have pop stream, and we pulled the list. We pulled a water shut off list, and you know we started marketing. We started um, cold calling. We started. Uh, you know, trying to get a hold of, you know, motivated sellers because that's what the water shut off is, you know, people that, I mean, people that are in need of selling, you know, so we, that's, that's how we got a hold of our, the, the seller that we close to deal with. And yeah, so we like, basically me and Lamar, we, we decided to team up, you know, we were like, all right, you have brothers, uh, cousins. What, what's the story? Start yeah, out, cousin. He's my cousin, and uh, he actually started wholesaling first, yeah, probably like what seven months. Yeah, it took me, yeah, seven months. I've been doing it for quite a while, but just never, I was on and off. And then, um, and then he was telling me, and I, I was like, he was telling me about wholesaling, and I was like, I don't know, man, I was al always interested in, in wholesaling and in real estate, actually. But he was telling me wholesaling, and I was like, all right, let's do it, man, let's team up. Like, we weren't really close like close close but uh me and him teamed up and we started taking action we started watching your videos and uh yeah water shot offs man you told us and we were like let's get the water shot off list yeah, and that's where our, our our uh our basically our lead came from and then we we started taking action obviously we're not the best still working on it yeah but of course we managed to, we, we managed to get him under contract um, we followed every step. We followed the MCTP. You know, we uh, we we pretty much just you know we did everything that you told us to do. Okay, let, let, let's rewind this back, right? So first of all, you guys are in Illinois, uh, Chicago. So obviously, you guys did virtual wholesaling from here. So you went to PropStream. You pulled the water shot off list. A lot of probably a lot of people don't know it's the utility liens. Is that what you guys pulled in inside of PropStream? Yeah, right. You pulled it. Yeah, I, we think we did that one, and we also uh, got in contact with the county, Milwaukee County. Got it. So okay, it came from one of the one of those, and um, that's where we got the water shot off list. Okay, and how did you guys skip trace that? Uh, we used a uh, batch skip trace for that one, and it, it cost us like a hundred bucks to be honest, because it wasn't that big of a list. Yeah, and we just called that in like two days, and we got like a few a few leads that were were interested in selling. But uh, our main one was uh, his, his name was Anthony, like my name. Yeah, like and, his name, which is pretty funny. And I was like, "All right, this is good luck." And we uh, yeah, we kept in, in contact with him. At first, he was like 
sticking to this price. I don't want to. What I'm price? Not so he was at seventy five. You know, he was. Okay. He he didn't want to negotiate. You know, um, but we just kept talking to him. You know, we were caring about his situation. You know, we try to work with him as much as possible, and then you know. We kind of, uh, you know, told him that, uh, you know, our numbers were tight, you know, just we were just negotiating with him and we brought him down to 70, which, you know, he was OK with. And, you know, from there we sold it, you know, we sold it for 80 and pretty much. Yeah, I, mean. I got on deal machine and I started driving for dollars like <clears throat> like in person and I got a bunch of leads and I came back and I I used Podio. It was free up to a certain point and I maxed that out within three or four days putting the the actual driving for dollars like in real life and then i kind of reverse engineered it and i i ended up getting a thousand leads entered in to my podio with their a bunch of free um skip trace through what is it the one that true, you guys true people true, search true people search and i mean that's a thousand leads they were mostly like non-owner occupied so it's like mm -hmm. um people who have rentals and usually like two or three so they're not necessarily in the business of it and they probably get tired of it and both of the deals i got was through landlords who were just trying to get out of it they were at the end of the line they didn't want to be that involved in them and they both needed a lot of work awesome okay and so let's talk about the first deal so what was the marketing on that one um that's an awesome thing about it it's just what i already had in place i was just making phone calls like probably 80 to 100 contacts a day and i know it sounds low but some of these people had like five six numbers a piece and then Especially if I got the voicemail on a cell phone, I just send a text right away. And I've actually got a lot of response. Even if it's no, I like to see that somebody, dude, that's been the best for me. I call. I don't care about voicemails because I just in my mind, I wouldn't know who's calling me. You know, yeah. I just don't have the right system set up to where it would just kind of be awkward. Anyway, I leave a text and I've gotten quite a few people text me back even like recently it was like a month ago i had called him and i sent him a text and he's actually like yeah i, I like to sell so i'm gonna go look at it wednesday okay and so on so the first deal there so what kind of list was that it's not a list i just made it myself through uh deal machine oh through driving for yeah. dollars driving reverse driving for dollars yeah okay got it from there and then when you met with them what's the story on that one um i just i said i'd have to see uh, kind of the condition before I can make them that final offer. Um, and they were in Joplin. They had like a, there was a tragic death in the family, actually. Their son was taking care of the property. And now that he passed away, they don't have anybody to take care of it. So anyway, I had to meet with like a grandson. And that was like a week later. I just had to keep following through and uh, finally met with a grandson. And we like built really good rapport uh, mm -hmm. right away. And we okay. walked the house. And then he was actually the one that helped me negotiate a price that was a lot lower than I actually was going to offer. Okay. And what, what was your offer price on that one? On the phone? I'm such a noob, dude. I, I'm just making this up and like listening to you guys as much as I can. But I was like, they said something about, well, we bought it for 40000 And I was like, okay, I might give you sixty, which is such a stupid thing, man. I feel so <laughs> stupid. But you just keep learning, you know? Yeah. And uh, I showed up and I was like, it looks a whole lot like there's so many more repairs than I was planning on having to make. I was like, man, I'd probably have to get actually i said thirty five thousand. i'd probably have to give you thirty five thousand. And he's like well i think we need more like 40 can we meet in the middle and i was like thirty eight thousand. so that's what we went under for and it's a three bed two bath 2100 square foot and it was livable yeah it was like a ton of value and i didn't know that because i looked at the the like uh the realtor.com like the listing and it said it was only like 1700 square foot and i guess they hadn't counted some of the upstairs so it was like an added bonus. Okay. So that specific one, 38,000. And you said you, didn't you wholetail this one? <clears throat> yeah, I, I didn't actually do anything to it besides a little bit of AC work. Like uh, the he they needed the heater turned on. So mm -hmm. I had to uh, have my heating and air guy come out and like put some duct work back together. It wasn't it was just a couple hundred dollars. And then I- How did you get that um, deal? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, since I come from a marketing background, I'm like, okay, how do I generate some inbound leads? So I did my research. I took about three months of just grinding through the first couple of pages of Google, seeing what they're doing, um, looking at some success stories on Carrot. I don't use Carrot. I'm not an affiliate, so I'm not vouching for them, but it's they produce a lot of SEO content on this real estate investing space. So um, after studying all these other websites, success stories. I was like, okay, I can do this. I can build this. 
did the, all the keyword research. Uh, I put everything together. It took about four months before I generated my first lead. Um, I used the funds from the failed business. I sold it. It's probably worth a quarter million, a uh, quarter million, but I sold it for 20 K cause I just wanted to get out of it. Um, with all the chargebacks and angry clients. Um, so anyways, I used those funds. It took about four months, but I knew what I was doing and I knew eventually the first leads will trickle in and the very first lead was fire damage. Um, and it, it was, it was a little weird. So the way I, I, I didn't take any course, but the way I looked at it is if I generate a lead, I could, I could fail forward. I'll learn from there. I'll take the call based off of what I'm saying on YouTube. And I saw a lot of your content on how to talk to sellers. Mm -hmm. So I literally used the script verbatim. I was like, oh, this is crazy. It's working. Like it's working. This is crazy. So that's how I generated the first lead. Um, and that first lead turned into a deal. It was fire damage. I had no clue what I was doing, um, but I did lock it up. Santa title company, a lot of failure there, had no clue what I was doing. Um, but I told the seller, I was honest with her. I was like, this is my first go around. Please bear with me. I promise I'll get this done. So that happened. And then I had to extend the contract and the city enforcement was cracking down on the property because of the fire. Um, so I was under pressure. I tried to JV with someone. Um, she probably put in about a, a day's worth of work and disappeared for two weeks. So I thought she brought a, she was going to bring a buyer in two weeks, but she didn't. So then I put in the sweat equity marketplace post, Facebook post, and I just fell forward. And I found a construction company owner who was eyeing this property and he saw the treasure. Everyone else saw trash. He saw treasure. And that's how I got the first deal. Okay. So where, where's this property located? Indiana. Indiana. And you don't live in Indiana, right? Connecticut. No. So, I mean, you're, you're outside of that area. So you got it locked up for how much? Uh, it was locked up for about 20K. 20K. And then what was it sold to to that construction guy? It was so, so we had to renegotiate the price. I mean, zero dollars on that deal. Ooh. Um, and the reason why was because there were back taxes. It just needed to be torn down completely. Yeah. Um, so, but I was willing to make zero dollars because I was like, I'm going to help this lady. I told her I will help her. So I helped her. And I was super excited when I saw the HUD. And when the title company said, you know, the, the, the whole, you know, they're recording all the documents and everything like that. Um, and I was like, whoa, this, she trusted me. She came to my site. I had no clue what I was doing. I told her I had no clue what I was doing and she trusted me and I got it done. Wow. Um, I wasn't sold on fire damage. I was like, I'll never do a fire damage deal again. If, if it means making no money, I'm not doing it, you know? So um, I took on a few other regular uh, wholesale deals still had no clue what I was doing. I finally got a course. The course didn't add, add too much value. I just kept watching free content on YouTube. And that's why I really learned most of your stuff on how to talk to sellers, how to analyze the deal. And then finally, um, you know, I, I did another deal, but I had to cancel that contract. And that was a regular wholesale. Cause I didn't understand subject two. now you're producing all the content on it. Now I get it. So it's kind of like beating my head, you know, with a hammer. Like, I wish I knew this then. Um, but the, my third deal was fire damage. And First deal, wholesaling vacant land. Like, how much money do you have? What was the marketing looking like? Just kind of break down that exact first deal. First deal I did was from direct mail, right? Okay. It was like a very niche list in an area where there was building going on but it wasn't too much building so i, I did my market research i spent a hundred dollars and i said nice. to us, yeah i it wasn't too many letters it was a, like uh, was it a letter postcard like what it was a one page agreement letter so basically the first page kind of stated who i was but on the bottom it was kind of like if you're interested you can sign here um just the, the little term the one page agreement letter so okay. It was it sent those out. And once I sent that out, I got a call from actually somebody from that owned multiple lots and they said they wanted to sell them. So once I did that, I did some research. I kind of didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that I had to get them on the contract. That's the first yeah. step. So uh, I, I spoke to him on the phone. He owned three lots and 
basically I said I, I'm interested in all of them. So I sent them an agreement. We moved forward. And once I got the agreement, I started marketing it to try to sell it. Right. And somebody reached out to me from a big, I guess they were a big wholesaling company, but their, their, their expertise, I would say is dispositions. So they kind of helped me find a buyer and I was able to sell each of those lots and make a thousand dollar assignment fee on each of those lots. Okay. Wow. Uh, that's great. You know, so mm -hmm. let, let's talk about kind of that direct mail part. Uh, mm -hmm. Did you create that ad copy yourself? Did you use a company who did that? Like, what was that process? There was a, there was like a little course that I did back. I forgot what it was called, but they kind of showed you like the one page agreement, but yeah. you're able to sign it and send it back and it would be legit for the title company to use. Okay. But that's not how we did it. Once he called, I sent him the standard vacant land Got contract it. and, we, and we did it like that. Okay. And yeah. so you said you got a list of lots, right? And you did, what service did you use to get a list of lots? Oh man, prop stream. Prop stream. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. So I mean, obviously I don't want to give out any good vacant land markets, but like, I mean, you, you kind of look at where there's construction and things like that. And you just kind of pull the list. Is it just all like lots? Like I know there's a bunch, I know prop stream, like there's, there's filters, lots, infill land, like all that stuff. But like, do you just click vacant land or do you get like individual with like just only lots because there's agricultural residential all that crazy stuff for land like specific because you said it was niched out like what kind of niche was it there no that, that's a great question so basically we do residential vacant lot i want the owner to have owned it for five plus years um we we did individual and corporate for this one got it and um we we did out of state owners as well so we we broke it down to the city to where it was just a small list so we made sure to Smart. just send it out but you know, um, it was my first marketing campaign in the first call. It was definitely nerve wracking. Wow. Like, oh, what am I doing? You know, but uh, honestly, the title company that helped me close this deal is the same title company I use today. They basically, once I send them the contracts, they they walked me to actually close the deal. Without them, I probably wouldn't have closed it. Um, okay. And yeah, that's the same. What state was that deal? What was it? What state was that deal in? In Florida. Okay. And so was it like, it wasn't near Orlando, right? Or was it? It, it was in Point Siena. Okay. And so you use that title company there. How did you find that title company? Um, it was networking. I, I known I know people that were actually in the business yeah. of friends and they recommended it and I reached out and they've been great. They've been great. Awesome, man. So thousand dollars. How did that feel at 25 years old versus Simon Jack? Man, proof of concept. Honestly, bro. I JV'd like I like I told yeah. you so when we got the HUD. I seen I made a thousand, but the JV company made three thousand off of each Ooh. one. Yeah, that's what I said. But honestly, once I sat back and I thought about it, I'm like, the blessing is in the proof of concept. Yeah. They can have the money. At least I was able to do this, and now I know I learned from it. Uh, you know, yeah. we're gonna make sure the numbers make sense next time. Yeah. Make sure everything is fifty fifty. Um, go for dollars, literally. Uh. Skip traced them. I, I don't even think I paid for the skip trace. I went on two people search.com, got the phone number for free, and uh, <laughs> called him up and spoke. He owned a few properties out here, and uh, he spoke more about this one and this one. And uh, yeah, just we agreed on a price, got on a piece of paper. He lives, he, he lived out in uh, another state. I forgot what it was, somewhere down south. But uh, we were able to come to an agreement on price, got that done, and found a buyer the same day. We got a uh, contract ran up and I will, I will say it was a little, it was a little more, um, it was definitely kind of complex. He had a, he had multiple properties that we went under contract with him. He had two, two or three lots, mm -hmm. three lots. And then he had that, um, that property that had the uh, house on it as well. So we figured out a total price for everything, went under contract, um, separate contracts for each one. And then we found the buyer for that house. Okay, and do you wholesale those lots too separately, or is it all together in one? So the lots, um, we so we did the house separately. Um, the lot, the title ended up being bad on all of them. Um, there were some issues there. There was a sinkhole on one, so there was nothing we nothing we could really do with them. So it's yeah. not like we tried to just get the house for yeah. this price since it's all a package, but still separate. Your first wholesaling real estate deal. So I didn't get my first wholesale deal. Um, till five months into me starting 
Um, so I got my first wholesale deal in May of uh, last year. And it wasn't for lack of trying. Um, every single time that I had a little bit of you know time, I would spend it cold calling. As soon as I would get home from work from like five or like six to eight thirty, I would cold call every single day. Mm-hmm. But I didn't get a deal till about five months in. Wow. And let's talk about that deal. What list was it from? How did you get it? The whole nine yards. That deal that I got, I believe was from a tired landlord list. And uh, it, it was actually sent to me um, by one of my VAs. And I had a VA at the time because um, I just didn't have the time. Since I had a full-time job, um, I, I was making enough money to where I could afford one. And I had already spent a couple of months myself learning how to call and you know just practicing and stuff. So I felt comfortable enough to get somebody to help me out while I was at work. And he actually sent me this deal from the tired landlord list. And it was just... I think this this deal was in Newport Ritchie and it was like a like a bigger property like on some on some land and it was just a single family house and the guy was just sick and tired of dealing with the tenant um he wasn't paying rent he wouldn't leave the property and um he was just sick and tired of it wow okay and so did you go meet him at the property like what was he, the process it was crazy because I spoke with him at like 8:30 or like 8 8 8 at night or 8:30 at night like when I got back from work and um, we did everything on that same call. Um, I talked to him. He wanted two hundred thousand dollars for the property. I tried to negotiate down a little bit. He wouldn't do it. Um, I felt pretty comfortable that that price it was still a good deal. And I locked it up for two hundred. I sent him the agreement via DocuSign after the call ended, and he signed it right away. I I couldn't even believe that he signed it. Honestly, I was, you know, I just kind of everything happened in like the matter of like thirty minutes. What was your process like? How did you give the offer over the phone? Um, I just kind of worked through, you know, your typical motivation, condition, time frame, and the price. And, you know, I talked to him a little bit about why he wanted to sell the property. Um, you know, what the, the condition was and, you know, what was the issue with the tenants? And I just agreed to the price that, that he, that he set up 200,000 after I, you know, tried to see if he could do a little bit better, like 180, I think I offered him. And then I, you know, he wasn't going to budge on the price. So I just agreed to, to his price. Okay. And what was that official price? 200,000, 200. And you locked it up and then eventually you had to find the cash buyer there. What was that process like? Honestly, I didn't have any buyers at the time. I just, I started and I didn't have any buyers at the time. Like literally like the whole experience that I've had wholesaling since I started, I just went out there and did it. You know, I just worked, you know, my way through it. Um, I didn't have any buyers. I posted the deal on, on Facebook groups and um, I had a buyer call me. I think it was either the same, the, the next day, I think a buyer called me at night and um, he, we met up with him or I met up with him the next day at the property. Um, I was, I think I was marketing it, marketing it out for 270 and we ended up locking it up with him for 250. Wow. So that was my first deal. And so $50,000 close. Close. And then from there, Uh, somebody at the local RIA group came up to us and said, are you guys wholesalers? We said, yes. He said, here's a property that I own. I want you to figure out what the ARV on it is. I want you to figure out some good comps on it. And I want you to figure out what you think the rehab cost for me was. And then meet me on Friday and we'll go over it. And then from there, we met this guy and he kind of showed us he's a flipper. So he's not a wholesaler, but he knows about the process. We actually have to go to our first deal we did with him in Grand Rapids and basically he walked us through the process. He he went to so many houses with us, man. We when we first started so taking many. action, so many houses. Um, the, the, a couple of times we we uh, sent him pictures of the wrong house that we actually were going to see. <laughs> so he really went through a lot with us. But yeah. he got that first deal with us, and Ryan's actually an agent. So what we ended up doing is our first wholesale deal was only two grand assignment fee, but she gets to list it on the back end. Um, and we got to walk through the entire process and go through his whole flip. So that's, that was our first deal, man. That's what got us hooked. And then from there, it was just, wow, this really works. That I just got a heavy conviction from the Lord saying, you need, if you want to do this, I need you to put your 100% in. I need you to jump in um, with your whole heart and all your mind and just go at it. And don't be scared of your failures because, you know, I got you in my right hand. Like I got you. And so... I ended up putting in my two weeks with an amazing job with Nabisco. Again, being a sales rep, I got it. I had a territory 
or a route, I should say, over in Oregon. And then I immediately got promoted to the same position over here in Florida. So it was, you know, again, a huge blessing there. But the Lord just really said, you know, I got bigger plans for you and I want you to jump into real estate. I think this is, you know, I know this is the gateway to that. And um, so, yeah, come March, uh, March 12th was my last day at my job. And so March 14th, I want to say, is a Monday. Uh, my first day that I actually sat down and was like, okay, I pulled a list on PropStream, which was like the only list I knew. And that was a vacant list that was high equity. And um, I, so that was kind of the list that I pulled. And so I started cold calling. And also on Monday, I did a quick driving for dollars. And, you know, cause I knew that was something that was really hot too. So I, those were my two um, marketing attacks at first. My marketing strategies was driving for dollars and then pulling a, a simple list of vacancy and, and high equity. Um, and so Tuesday, actually. So Monday, I started cold calling. I, I gathered some driving for dollars, reached out to some property owners. And then uh, Tuesday, I got two leads, two hot leads. And yep. And then it was about, so I just, I spoke with them. Those were actually the two deals that ended up closing in April where uh, one was driving for dollars and the other one was high equity. And um, how much yeah, were they? So, Tell everyone. Yeah. So they, I, I closed both of them for, a total of 23,000. 